Drinking water out of the tap or bottled water? What's better for you? How about what's better for the environment? If you answer drinking tap water, you're right. And just why is that? Well, tap water is monitored constantly for safety. Additionally, throughout the United States in most cities, tap water is still under a penny per gallon. Well, today on the show, we're going to be talking to the folks at Ventura Water about water quality, how water is tested, why it tastes the way it does, and certain challenges we're facing here in Ventura. But first, let's find out where our water comes from. We took our cameras out onto the street and asked some residents. Here's what they had to say. I think Ventura's water supply comes from either the Ventura River or Lake Casitas. So I think Ventura's water comes from the rain. I think Ventura's water comes from uh, mountains and, and rivers. Uh, our water comes from Northern California, primarily from the Sierra Snowpack. Today, Ventura is one of California's largest cities that relies 100% on local water supplies. Since the days of the mission, Ventura has provided water from adjacent shallow wells and surface diversion and subsurface collectors. The Avenue Water Treatment Facility, constructed in 2007, treats this water source with membrane ultrafiltration before delivering it into the distribution system. Treated water is also purchased from the Casitas Municipal Water District, the operator of Lake Casitas. This source enters the distribution system on the city's west side. Water is also pumped from groundwater wells located throughout the city. The groundwater sources are treated at either the Bailey or Satakori water conditioning facilities with pre-chlorination and direct media filtration. Today, Ventura Water owns and operates 11 groundwater wells, three water treatment plants, two treated water connections from Lake Casitas, 23 booster pump stations, 31 storage reservoirs, more than 3,700 fire hydrants, and 380 miles of distribution pipelines. Because Ventura's beautiful coast is hilly and varying terrain, and the fact that water has to be pumped at certain pressures to move within the pipes, the city has 14 pressure zones throughout the city to ensure water flows properly through the pipe infrastructure system to your home or business. Almost 300 miles of sewer collection mains lead to the city's sole wastewater treatment facility, the Ventura Water Reclamation Facility. This plant treats an average of 9 million gallons of wastewater every day to strict standards before releasing the water into the sensitive Santa Clara River estuary at the mouth of the Pacific Ocean. From the days of Ventura's founding fathers, abundant, fresh, clean running water has always been a cherished natural resource. Over time, effective infrastructure methods of delivering clean water, as well as the careful distribution, transport, and the treatment of wastewater has also been essential to Ventura. As your neighbor in this community, Ventura Water is dedicated to protecting and preserving our precious life-giving water resources for today and the generations yet to come. What's in our water and how do we test it? Let's ask Ventura Waters' Luis Casillas. Hello, Marianne. We're here in front of one of our uh, city sample stations for Highland and Catalina. And these are one of the stations that we use to sample the quality of our water, where we check for uh, chlorine residuals, uh, pHs. Uh, we take sampling to uh, check for minerals and anything that could be an indicator for water quality. Can you show us how you test for samples? Okay, Marianne, I'm going to go ahead and show you and open up the, our sample station here. This is the actual um, faucet that we use to sample. And we basically flush the water for about 15 minutes, and then we take our sample. How do we know our water is safe to drink? We have very stringent uh, water quality procedures that we follow that are directed by the state of California. Um, so as far as when you turn on your tap at home, you can be uh, confident that the water is very, very um, quality controlled and uh, 
kept at a very high standard. And how often do we test our water? We test daily, weekly, monthly, and um, all the data is collected from uh, these sample stations are, are put into reports and are given to the state and as, so they can review and look them over. And as also the, the, the state of California also has the, the access to our plants to check the integrity of our plants to make sure everything is being done by uh, their procedures. What do we test for and why? We test for, uh, for calcium hardness, um, magnesium, iron, chlorine residuals, uh, pHs, and those are all indicators of water quality. Tell me, what's usually found in our water? Uh, again, we have different sources. We have sources from the river, and uh, as far as the river goes, you know, we have, you know, dust, impurities, um, or organics that uh, when we, when it comes to our process, uh, we hypochlorinate, it goes to our actual treatment plants, and uh, the filtration process starts. What do we test for? We have uh, two different processes. We have the Avenue Treatment Plant, that's an ultrafiltration system, which is uh, filters that uh, are hair follicled, and they have holes that are uh, 0.02 micron. So basically uh, water, it's another barrier besides the actual hypochlorination that prevents from any type of virus or bacteria or impurity coming into the, into the water system. We have uh, the Bailey and, uh, and Sadequoy plants, and those are those are actual groundwater treatment plants and they treat for iron magnesium. Okay, and we actually pre-chlorinate and then we use direct filtration to actually produce a quality water. What happens if a sample tests positive for a contaminant? Okay, we have protocols for everything. So say we have a, a positive test, we actually take uh, uh, pr uh, precautions. We test uh, uh, upstream and downstream of the actual uh, violation and we actually check the source to make sure that there, there's everything is good and, and there's no uh, actual uh, real violation there. What causes a false positive? If you know not wearing gloves, you cough on it, um, you breathe on it a certain way, it might contaminate it. Can you show us how to take a sample? So I'm going to go ahead and flush for a little bit and I'm going to go ahead and uh, um, fill this little uh, vial to about five mils and then actually stick a reagent and that's going to gonna go ahead after I stick it in this monitor here, this little analyzer, it's going to tell me how much residual is in the water. So I flush it three times. Okay. Like so. As you can see, it's starting to turn a color there. Okay, you see that? So I'd wait a little bit. This monitor here. You put it inside this little pocket analyzer and it'll give you a residual of where you're at as far as the chlorine residual. So, so for example, if you have a positive or something, that's the first thing you go. You go upstream, you go downstream, you check your chlorine residual, see where that's at. Okay? And then you'd actually take uh, what they have a uh, present absence back tea samples. We'd put some powder in it, which is what you know, food, and if there's anything present this would turn after uh, 24 hours. Okay, and that let us know, but like, most likely it's not gonna happen. It's just, like I said, the water has a pretty good residual in it, so it keeps the water pretty clean. We've been talking about Ventura Water's treatment processes and testing processes. Tell me, what's being done to keep our water safe? Uh, well, we have uh, various uh, maintenance programs that we do within our, our water system. Two key components that I'd like to discuss is um, our water flushing program and as well as our um, valve exercise program. Uh, the first one is our valve um, flushing program, which uh, we do to remove the sediment which is uh, in our distribution system. And so as time goes on, uh, sediment will settle out within the water distribution piping and that can include iron and manganese and um, calcium and other, other uh, minerals that settle within our system. So by flushing that out, we improve one, the, our water quality and also um, uh, extend the longevity of our water distribution pipelines. Um, the other component I'd like to talk about is our uh, valve exercise. And um, throughout our distribution system, our employees go out and they exercise the valves, ensuring that they're working properly, able to shut off completely, and that they're open all the way. Uh, this helps us in the event of an emergency, uh, so we can minimize the number of customers that are affected, uh, minimize the damage that could be caused by the water running, and also uh, reduce our water loss. Um, these are two of the essential portions of maintenance in our distribution system. 
How do you alert the public that this is happening? Well, our customers will see that we put out signs in the uh, affected areas that notify them that we're flushing or performing a valve exercising program. And we rotate these signs um, in the areas prior to uh, the commencing of that project. Okay, and what that consists of is our operators turning on hydrants to allow flow to go through each distribution line, uh, removing the sediment that has settled out throughout time uh, within the distribution system, improving the carrying capacity, improving the water quality, and also the longevity of the pipe as well. Why does our water sometimes taste different? Is it okay to drink? No, you know, our, our water is safe. Um, and uh, water is known as the universal solvent. And what that means is almost everything that comes in contact with water, it will break down within water. Uh, our groundwater, which some of our customers consider, call it hard water, consider it hard water, um, does have a higher mineral content uh, because the formation down below um, is being dissolved by the water. And with that, we start getting calcium and, magne calcium and magnesium, which are uh, components that cause hardness in water. Uh, that does not mean that the water is not uh, safe to drink, it's just um, an aesthetic concern to some of the customers. Uh, in comparison, our surface water, which comes from Ventura River or Lake Casitas, does not have as high a mineral content, but does have um, other, uh, other tastes that customers will report, and often that has to deal with the changes within Lake Casitas. Uh, seasonally, what we find is Lake Casitas has an algae bloom, and some customers um, can detect a musty or earthy type smell within the water. Just like our groundwater, uh, it is also safe to drink uh, and it does not create um, a health concern. What causes our tap water to look rusty or yellow and what does that mean? Um, you know, as we talked earlier, we mentioned that water is the universal solvent and some of the natural occurring minerals um, are iron and manganese. And what we find is as, iron, as um, iron becomes dissolved in water, which is naturally occurring in the groundwater, uh, it, it can come out of solution and give that tint. And what we recommend is to just flush your line. Similar to uh, how we mentioned that our staff is flushing our lines to remove that sediment, um, often it can be trapped in your own lines. It may not be something related to the water system. It can be related to uh, um, um, the residential plumbing for a um, household. We recommend that you just flush that line. And if you notice that it still can't be resolved in that matter, call, call uh, Ventura Water and we'd be more than happy to send somebody out and find out what the cause is. Or you can also refer to a plumber and, and they can assist you in that direction as well. But just like um, we mentioned before, it is an aesthetic concern, but it doesn't cause a health concern and that water still meets the state and federal standards. You know, sometimes my water smells funny, like rotten eggs. What does that mean? One of the things that we find is when we go to the customer's house, we notice that when we take the sample and move it away from the source of where they're taking their sample, the water doesn't smell within the jar. Well, as time goes on, um, soap and hair uh, and other decayed um, organic matter gets stuck in the sink traps, and that gives an odor. And often people feel that that comes for the water, from the water, and essentially it's actually coming from the trap itself. And when tap water looks milky? Yeah, the water's, the water's safe to drink. Um, when people talk about milky water, and we refer to it as uh, air entrapment, uh, and it doesn't necessarily come from the water source. Uh, sometimes it comes from failing pipelines, uh, water heaters, there's different things that can cause it. Although uh, working on a pump or working on a new well, there's air within the ground and um, it will come out of solution. If you just give it a minute or so, you'll notice that it will come out of solution and it doesn't really cause uh, a health concern at all. Is it true that when water is colder, it's less milky? So uh, when we talk about the uh, air entrapment, one of the things to remember is the warmer the water, the more dissolved oxygen there is. Um, and colder water will not have that. So you'll notice uh, one of the things you might want to look for is, with, is this happening when I turn my hot water tap on? And if that's the case, it may be coming out of your uh, hot water or your water heater, uh, in which you may want to refer to a plumber at that time. If you notice it coming out of both taps, then you can just let it run for a few minutes and you may notice that it'll just <clears throat> dissipate and take care of itself. If not, you know, please feel free to call us and we'd be happy to send somebody out and try to find the solution. Bottled water is a huge economic industry. Tell me, is it true that it's safer to drink tap water versus bottled water? Uh, when it comes to tap water versus uh, bottled water, 
uh, one thing that most people don't realize is tap water is actually held to a higher standard. While bottled water does have to meet um, FDA regulations, uh, the tap water has to meet state and federal regulations and is tested more frequently than the bottled water. Uh, Ventura water is tested at various locations for numerous constituents um, daily. Tell me about how we might not be able to take as much water off the Ventura River moving forward. Uh, you know, some of the changes that has happened with the Ventura River is we've had um, some environmental regulations that have that have changed, uh, and there's also seasonal um, changes that have affected um, the, the surface water. So Ventura Water is working with our neighboring agencies that utilize the Ventura River to come up with a solution that best suits the environment as well as the longevity of our water source. And what about Lake Casitas? Um, as we mentioned before, um, Lake Casitas is also affected uh, by the regulatory compliance changes that allow us to take uh, water from the Ventura River um, as well as the seasonal changes that occur. Part of our water supply comes from groundwater wells. What do we need to be aware of and what are the concerns with that? When we talk about our groundwater, um, they, some of the key components and key factors we have to deal with is the customer's concern that this is, this is an aesthetic concern. It is not a, a health concern. Uh, because our water is considered hard and it does have a high mineral content, as we talked about, calcium and magnesium that cause their, uh, that are calcium and magnesium, which are the major causes of hardness in our water, um, often leave staining on plumbing fixtures or glasses. Our customers have a hard time accepting the aesthetic concerns, uh, and that will be uh, one of the things that we'll have to look at in the future. Which uh, it is, it is an expensive process to uh, remove that hardness out of the water. What do we need to be aware about our aging infrastructure health? Yeah, you know, uh, we talked earlier about some of the things that we're doing to um, kind of promote uh, uh, the lifespan of our aging infrastructure. And, and one of the things that we mentioned was our flushing program. We do have capital improvement projects um, that target some of the older uh, lines that are they're far beyond their, their lifespan. In Ventura, we do have some pipelines that age 100 years old. So we're aware that this is a very aging infrastructure, as many agencies have. Um, we are operating our system efficiently, exercising, evaluating, and um, through engineering, we're identifying the key areas um, that would have the highest impact if there were to be a failure and looking at removing and replacing those uh, infrastructures. The Brooks Institute of Photography is hosting the first Water Take One online short film contest tonight in one of their beautiful sound stages in the city of Ventura. There's food, refreshments, mixing and mingling, and later we'll be watching the finalist and award-winning videos. From March through October 2012, filmmakers from across the globe were invited to submit their films, five minutes or less, and upload them at no cost to the contest's online site at watertakeone.com. Films could be submitted in any genre, drama, documentary, comedy, animation, sci-fi, or experimental, as long as they addressed the topic of water. Tell me, why is water such an important focus? Well, obviously, water, our water resource is important here and around the world. And making sure we're doing everything to conserve our water, to protect it, uh, to keep it safe for, for human consumption, is, is every, it's what it's all about. It's, it's an important issue here and, and, like I say, around the world. So. And the city of Ventura gets very involved in educational outreach, recycling practices, water conservation, water pollution prevention. How did that all come about and why? what does that do for the city, do you think? Well, I think it was driven by our community. We have a lot of people in our community who are concerned about the environment, concerned about water resources, the air quality, uh, our land use, and because of that, our city government has responded accordingly. Tell me how you got started. The City of Ventura had a number of programs that they were launching this past year to help raise awareness of water and also help the community um, have different ways of conserving water and reusing water and, and basically educating the community. And so we came up with a few ways to get the word out. And one of the ways was an online short film contest because people are very used to watching videos and very used to sharing videos. It's a very viral community. And you know, when you make a film, it has a terrific impact. It's visual and it sticks with you and you share it with your friends. And um, it became apparent that it was a really good way to spread the message. What are your goals for the future now that you've got this first contest under your belt? 
For the future, we really want to focus on community activation. That is, we have a great event, we have a great uh, online contest, we have a launch event in the spring. We need groups, we need people out there actually spreading the word, submitting their films, letting the rest of the community know what we're doing, um, and just helping us promote the actual event. Tell me why this contest is so important to water. We want all age groups to talk about water in ways that they haven't thought of before. So they can talk about it as conservation or how the cycle works or um, what's going on in other countries, what's going on in their own home backyard. Um, we had someone who uh, was just here visiting their grandfather and so their mother said, hey, there's this contest going on, why don't you go and make a film about the wastewater treatment plant. So this is all about getting different people to learn and get value, the integration of water resources, because that is our future. In addition to Ventura Water, other sponsors of the event included Patagonia, Limoneros Limco Del Mar, and Ithentic. I caught up with a few of the sponsors at the event. Patagonia Clothing Company, with offices in the city of Ventura, is a designer of durable, multifunctional, quality outdoor clothing and gear, with a strong corporate culture that incorporates environmental sustainability. How did Patagonia get involved with this contest? Well, we were approached by the city of Ventura and we were excited to find the opportunity to bring art and conservation together. The Lima Nera Company, also a major sponsor of the contest, was founded in Ventura County in 1893. The company's dedication and innovation in the agricultural industry has helped found and develop many institutions that support the industry to this day. Over the years, Lima Nera has evolved into a global company whose mission is to preserve and promote sustainable practices. Tell me about how you got involved with the festival. Well. Limonera is one of the largest agricultural producers in California. We're the largest provider of lemons in the country, or one of the largest provider of lemons and avocados. All of our sustainable inputs are very, very important, and the company's been around for 120 years, so water is just very key. Gail, you have a wonderful students involved in tonight's event. Tell me about that. They have a film, Aaron Schmidt and Eddie Rayburn, and it's called Storm's End, and they're one of the finalists. That's fantastic. How did you become involved with this festival? Well, we're a film school, and I heard about the Water Take One event, and we wanted to be involved. So. Now, we're on a beautiful sound stage here. Does this have a story? I heard rumors that it was used for a feature film. It was, Aaron Brockovich. Ah, one of my favorite films. This is a, an important issue to us, water, sustainability, all important issues. It's what our business thrives on and what's important to us, and so we were happy to contribute to the organization in this event. And you are? I'm Will Allen. I'm uh, the creative director of Never Without a Picture, and we're uh, donating some services to the winner of the best student short film this evening. I'm here with the Lazo family, the Audience Choice Award winners, and John, I understand you're the family spokesperson tonight. Yep, that's me. Tell me how you made this film. How did it all come about? Well, my um, sixth grade science teacher uh, gave us the article in the, uh, that was in the newspaper, and she told us we, I might be interested in it, so um, that's kind of how it all got started. I told my parents about it and then we took a couple weeks and kind of brainstormed everything, how we were going to do it, and then um, put it into action. Tell me about the theme of your short. Um, well, our theme was obviously like don't uh, water conservation, so we had don't blow H2O, so don't waste water. I like this song at the end. Now tell me, did you guys sing that song? Uh, yeah, we sang the song. My dad, he's into that like stuff about music, and that's he liked that. He likes that stuff, so he kind of planned that out and told us what to sing and kind of all that stuff. And then me and my sister did the rap at the end. We just did that kind of at the end for fun. Thank you so much. Enjoy the evening. So we're going to get started tonight, and I'd love to introduce Shauna Epstein with Ventura Water now, general manager. Thank you. I want to thank you for coming to the big finish of Water Take One. This has been a wonderful collaboration in the true spirit of partnership. Ventura Water's core mission is to provide local, reliable, and quality water services to Ventura for all generations. But we know that strong partners are needed to protect, preserve, and even improve our water. 
Don't Blow H2O was the Audience Choice award-winning film from John and Joe Lazo. The filmmakers won a Canon EOX 7D digital SLR camera for their film about two youngsters who discover the importance of water conservation. The Best Student Short Film Award went to director Alexander Powell for his film Quotient, a film about a teenager who struggles to help his dehydrated brother in a future where people live under a strict water quotient. Powell won a subscription to lynda.com, a $200 gift card to Patagonia, and production advisory services provided by Never Without a Picture. The Grand Jury Prize, chosen from a jury of industry professionals, was awarded to Water, a film by Peter Jansen. Jansen won $1,500 for his film, which showcased the importance of water and communicated messages against wasting this essential resource. The Water Take One online short film contest is a creative way to bring attention to the serious issues of aging infrastructure and water challenges. If you'd like to be a sponsor or if you're a filmmaker with a video to submit in next year's event, visit watertakeone.com. Did you know that you can make a difference in protecting our watershed? Here's how. Sewer overflows and backups can be expensive as well as an environmental hazard. How can you avoid them? No fog, fats, oil, or grease down the drain. A source of grease may be as a result of cooking, coming from meat, fat, lard, cooking oil, shortening, butter, margarine, sauces, and dairy products. Put cooking oils and grease in a closed container and bring them to a household hazardous waste event held the third Saturday of every month except in December. And visit cityofventura.net slash hhw for more information. Put baskets and strainers in sinks and drains to catch foods and other solids and empty into the trash for disposal. Regularly check your home for leaks in your toilet, faucets and water hoses and fix leaks when you find them as soon as you find them. Replace old toilets with higher efficiency toilets. This can save 0.5 to 5 gallons of flush Install low flow shower heads and take shorter showers. Did you know that you can save two to five gallons per minute? For your lawn and in your garden. Capture rain falling from the sky in rain barrels and divert this water to your lawn and garden. When gardening and for your lawn, use smart irrigation technology and water saving devices. Overwatering can cause yard chemicals to flow into the storm drain system directly into our watershed. Watering early or late in the day is best. Try and incorporate less toxic practices. Learn about pest management. Use garden chemicals sparingly and read the label carefully and use only what is directed. By using these chemicals sparingly, you'll also save money. Enjoy the money-saving and conservation-wise ocean-friendly garden. Do the right thing and pick up after your pet every time. For more great tips on how you can be more water conscious, visit VenturaWater.net and VenturaWater.org. Clean water is vital to the people that live in our community and it will stay important as Ventura continues to grow and evolve. We're all stewards for those who will come after us. As your neighbor in this community, Ventura Water is dedicated to protecting and preserving our precious life-giving water resources for today and for generations to come. Visit VenturaWater.net and VenturaWater.org. Also visit sustainableventura.wordpress.com. And always remember, get your green on, Ventura.